What's up guys, welcome to Daily Dose of Reddit, this is your host, Zach, and today's subreddit is r slash choosing beggars. Alright, this story's called, If you want the cat that I'm getting rid of, you'll have to pay me for it. This happened a few weeks ago, but I've just discovered this community, so I thought I'd post it. Here's the cast, choosing beggar, me, myself. I think that might be obvious. <laughs> so I was browsing an online local marketplace, Gumtree, looking in the pet section for a rabbit hutch. I was scrolling down the pet section when I saw a picture of a frail-looking black cat with the title, Need Gone ASAP, moving. I couldn't ignore this despite not looking for a cat. There have been so many horror stories about people picking up free cats from Gumtree to use as bait in dogfights. I clicked on the picture and the listing said something along the lines of 10-year-old female cat free to a good home, moving in five days and can't take it with me. They had a phone number on the website, so I quickly composed a text. They responded pretty much instantly and the exchange went something like this. Hi, I was wondering if anybody has taken in your cat. If they haven't, I am able to provide her with a good home? No, they have not, and we are moving in five days. Blunt reply, I thought. No questions or response to me having the cat. Okay, well, I could come and get her this evening, or I could wait until moving day if you wanted some more time with her. It's up to you. She'll have a nice life here. I have another elderly black cat she can play with. What food is she on? Come get it tonight. Inserts address. It doesn't eat cat food. We just feed it chicken and things. Okay, see you around 5 p.m if that's okay. Is she up to date with flea and worm treatments and vaccinations? Yes, 5 p.m. and yes it is. Okay, see you then. About three hours go past and I get a text from her. Bearing in mind, this cat was listed as free to a good home. And the fact that cats, at least in the UK, usually don't sell unless they're a designer breed, as there are so many unwanted strays already, kittens can make about 30 to 50 pounds, but cats, nothing usually. Make sure you bring the correct amount of money, I don't have change. The cat was listed as free to a good home. How much do you want for the cat? I wasn't looking to get another cat, to be honest. I just saw your listing and thought she was in need, so I offered her a home. I won 45 pounds because that's how much I paid for its donation fee when I adopted in 2013. Got someone else interested that is going to pay it. I'm sorry, I wasn't looking to buy a cat. I think we have our wires crossed. I was concerned about the cat not having a home because you're moving, so I offered her a place. I'm not actually looking to purchase a another cat, but I was willing to give a home to one that was in need. If your cat's not in need, then it's best you give it to the other person so I can keep my out for animals that urgently need a home. Choosing beggar doesn't reply for an hour or so, even though our text messages are usually instant. The cat is getting put to sleep then. This in the UK means euthanized. Other person changed the mind and no rescue will take it because it's age. You don't need to put her to sleep, I will have her. But I get nothing and you get my cat. Because you said you can't take her. Surely it's best she goes to a loving home rather than be killed. Plus you'll have to pay to get her put to sleep so you will be out of pocket. No, I don't have to pay because the PDSA are doing it uh, for free. I've just made an appointment for tomorrow. PDSA are a UK charity that provides basically free free vet care to those on government support in exchange for a donation. At this point, I was getting fed up and I just decided that I would pay the money as I was fed up with the back and forth and I didn't want her to actually euthanize the cat. I have the money so please cancel the appointment. I'll be there at 5 p.m. like we agreed. Okay. I turn up to their home at 5 p.m. on the dot. I brought a cat carrier with me as I'm not expecting she will come with anything. I'm greeted by a rough looking looking woman in a house that smells like weed and has no carpets, just bare stained floor. The walls were yellow from nicotine and there was a punch mark in the living room door. I can hear dogs barking from the garden. 
Despite this, I'm polite and I'm led into the living room where the cat is asleep on the sofa. There's a cat bed in the corner which has a mother cat in it feeding about six to seven tiny baby kittens. I sit down to stroke her, during which I see two more cats stroll in the living room. One obviously heavily pregnant, although these cats seem a lot younger and healthier than the one I was taking. I thought it was odd as she said she was moving in five days, but there was no no evidence of packing, and there were several paint pots that had been tested on the wall as if they were in the process of redecorating. Anyway, I paid 50 pounds. I only had two 20 pound notes and a 10, so I just gave her that. She then had the audacity to ask me if myself or anyone I knew would be interested in a kitten for 60 pounds. I said no. I scooped up the cats and got the hell out of there. I realized in the car that the cat was infested with fleas. I didn't know what to do, but I have three small children, so I couldn't risk a flea infestation in our house. So I put her in the summer house in the garden, which has a sofa, pillows, blankets, etc., and let her spend the night there. In the morning, I took her out and have since completely fumigated it. I took her to the vet who treated her for a number of problems, including fleas, worms, severe malnutrition. She weighed half of what she should. Burn marks on the belly, which the vet describes as looking like they were done with a cigarette, a severe heart murmur, overbreeding. The vet said it was apparent that she had been used a significant amount of times to have kittens. The vet also told me the cat wasn't 10 and was about 17. The vet took the details of the woman who I got her from as he said he was going to report her as he'd never seen a cat in this bad of a shape. A hefty vet's bill later and we were both home. She loves her new life here and has really come out of her shell. She loves her cat friend. I don't know how long she has left, as the heart murmur is pretty bad. The vet said it wouldn't have gotten to the stage if it was detected and operated on much sooner. But for now, she is loving life. A happy ending to this story about a piece of poo choosing beggar. Well, that was very nice of OP to rescue that cat from those horrible conditions. Man, that lady's messed up. All right, this story's called Choosing Beggar Tried to Get a Refund at Our Restaurant. First, English is not my first language, so if there are some mistakes in grammar or spelling, please just overlook them. The story is maybe not as bad as some other Choosing Beggar stories, but it got stuck in my head because of the audacity of some people. This happened a few years ago. My parents own a hotel with a restaurant, and well, like all restaurants do, we are getting our fair share of choosing beggars. This one evening, I was helping out in the restaurant working as a waitress when we had two women enter our place. I seated them and they ordered the pheasants. I hope this is the right word for it and yes, we are serving these kinds of dishes, which is a dish for two people to share. For drinks, they ordered a whole bottle of quite expensive red wine. I serve them their drinks and later their meal and there it begins. They started eating and and then called me over to complain about the food. They said the pheasant was really dry and overcooked and they could not eat it. I told them politely that the pheasant wasn't overcooked and that this bird is generally dry, like duck for example. You have to eat it with the sauce that comes with it. They were not having it. They complained and complained. Defeated, I took the nearly untouched and perfectly fine pheasant, my father and I tried it later in the kitchen, back to the kitchen. When I told my mother, who was the chef, she of course got angry, but well, she couldn't do more about it than I. The two women ordered a new dish, and because the meat was so bad in our restaurant, they both ordered fish. Then they waited for their meal, and in the meantime, drank nearly the full bottle of red wine. When I brought the fish out to their table, everything was fine. But then one of them got up, went over to the bar where my father was working, and demanded to return the almost empty bottle of red wine because red wine doesn't go well with fish. My father looked at the bottle, dumbfounded, and told them they can order white wine if they wanted, but they still had to pay for the red one. Nope, not with that lady. She argued that they had ordered the red wine because of the pheasant, but after it being so bad and them now having fish instead, they wanted a refund for the bottle. My father told her that the wine was fine and therefore not refundable. Also, he asked why they hadn't returned the 
red wine with the pheasant right at the beginning instead of drinking nearly all of it. The woman had no real answer for this question and got angrier and angrier. Then she demanded to get the white wine for free as compensation for their inconvenience with the pheasant, but my father declined them and told them that he had refunded the pheasant, which was perfectly fine and they got their new meals as fast as possible, and that was all they could have asked for. She tried to argue some more, disturbed the other guests with the commotion she caused, and then stomped off to her table after realizing she was getting nowhere. They finished their meals, about which they couldn't find anything to complain, while giving us angry stares. Left no tip, and later, a bad review. My father instructed me, and the other waitstaff later, that if these two ever came back to the restaurant to tell them that we are not serving them anymore. Luckily, they never did. Can't believe this. They tried to make them drink red wine with fish? I'm freaking out. I can't handle this. My poor heart. I'm, I'm good now. Let me say this. Wine, all wine, tastes bad with everything. Unless you mix it with orange juice, in which case it's just orange juice that'll get you drunk. But anyway, wine tastes so bad. This story's called The Choosing Beggar Who Refused to Contribute to My Grandma's Funeral Expense. I already feel like I might get differing opinions on this story of what I did, but this was something that happened a couple of years ago when my grandma passed away. My aunt, the choosing beggar, came from a poor country and immigrated to the US some 15 years ago. Since then, then she has done really well for herself. My grandma helped my aunt's family financially for over 30 years, including contributing towards her business that is running really well now. I've always felt that my aunt disliked my grandma for whatever reason, and I felt it even more strongly when my grandma passed away. Family gathered in kitchen, discussing funeral preparations. I think we should all split the expenses, since grandma didn't have insurance and it's gonna be too much to take care of on my own. Why do I need to contribute? Grandma didn't do anything for me anyway. Cue surprised Pikachu faces from the entire family. What do you mean? From what I remember, she's really helped you out. More so than the rest of the family. She helped you get to the US, she helped you start your business, and she supported you for over 30 years. How is that not doing anything for you? I'm disappointed you even think that. Mom did so much for you. Yeah, she did do all that, but she didn't leave a will so I can get the house that she has back home. There's five of us. What makes you think she'll leave the home to you? I'm clearly her favorite child. It only makes sense that it comes to me. Anyway, I will not contribute to a funeral expenses. You are absolutely not getting the house. Mom actually wrote the house to me to sell and split between us, but I will not let you have your portion. I cannot believe how disrespectful you are. What? That's impossible. I was the favorite. I guess you weren't the favorite after all. I will not contribute a single cent to this. You can take the house and shove it. I'm seeing red, but trying to stay calm. Okay, auntie, you don't have to contribute. Aunt stomps off to complain to her husband. I was furious, but I knew exactly how to shut her down. I started a new job a few weeks before her death. So guess whose paycheck was coming in two days before the funeral? Mine. In my culture, the first first paycheck is always something that is looked at to be the start of the future, so the way someone spends it is extremely important. I made sure to do this at the funeral parlor in front of my entire family with the microphone accidentally being on. My uncle knew I planned this, so he was thumbs upping me the entire time. Dave the funeral in front of the whole family. Here you go, mom. I want to give you my very first paycheck to put towards grandma's funeral arrangements. I know it's been hard for you since auntie said she wouldn't contribute towards funeral arrangements despite all the time and effort grandma put towards making sure auntie had a good life, especially since she financially took care of her for over 30 years while auntie just stayed home. But it's okay. I will contribute because grandma has taught me so much. Hopefully her soul will be happy that although her daughter is ungrateful, her granddaughter truly cared about her. <laughs> oh, oops. Is this thing on? Oh, silly me. I grin at auntie. Uncle in the back, thumbs upping me. My family members and other friends who came to pay respects. Ooh, drama. My aunt was so furious. 
she turned red and walked away. She hasn't spoken to me since, and honestly, I couldn't care less. Nobody gets to be ungrateful to my grandma. <laughs> okay, this is kind of funny. <laughs> oh, oops, is this thing on? Silly me. Beautiful. All right, this story is called Choosing Beggar versus Just a Beggar. Seeing lots of posts recently where the OP doesn't necessarily know the difference. Please see the guide below for help. Can I get a insert latest video game free, please? Equals just begging. Can I get a uh, insert latest video game free for my kid's birthday? Still just begging. Can I get a insert latest video game free for my kid's birthday? I'm unemployed because it broke and have a dying grandma to look after. Yep, still just begging. Can I get insert latest video game free for my kid's birthday? I'm unemployed because it broke it and have a dying grandma to look after. Also, could you deliver it to me as I don't drive? Extremely freaking cheeky, but still just begging. Can I get a insert latest video game free, please, for my kid's birthday? But looking for brand new only, don't want any pre-used copies, and must be the collector's edition and the limited limited edition middle case, because that's what my dear little Tar Tarquin, Tarkeen, I don't know how that's pronounced, wants. Also, you must be able to deliver on the 14th of this month before midday. Before midday, as I applaud, he's in the afternoon. Equal choosing beggar also known as a cheeky what is this word fuquit i don't know my innocent brain can't tell you therefore it can't be a demon no no tized word i just thought of that right now i'm creative i know don't forget to like subscribe and hit that bell to never miss an episode